Welcome to Revitalize and Replant with Mark Clifton, where we equip pastors to take their churches from declining to thriving by pointing them to a new future and a new hope. Join us weekly for encouragement and practical advice in your pastoring journey. This is a, a kind of a special broadcast uh, uh, of our, uh, our Revitalize and Replant with Mark Clifton podcast because we're kind of wrapping up the year here, and uh, it's been an interesting year. Do you realize that this time last year, this wasn't even a dream, you know, to do something Isn't that crazy? Like it's this. true. It's right. So this, it all came around about April of, of 2023, <laughs> and this is December of 2023. So it's been just you know that many months, nine months, about a long enough time to have a baby. Actually, <laughs> yeah. Just, just how many? Baby. How many? How many podcasts <laughs> yeah. are, are are we thinking it is something like eighty? Uh, no, no, 88. no, eighty-eight. Eighty-eight. Is that all? Eighty-eight. Is that 88 all? Eighty-eight since April. <laughs> eighty-eight since April. And so, guys, listen, goodness. listeners, you have no idea. This is kind of fun to talk about. We we love Mark Clifton. This guy, we're you know we're talking about doing a podcast. Hey, we'll do an episode a week. He's like, we're going to do two. And we're now we're actually going to two a week. And, doing, and, and now it, three. And every other Friday. <laughs> every other so Friday. We, we do 10 a month right now. And that's only because I can't get them to do 12 a month. That's right. Uh, at that point. But in all re- re- it's because we love we pastors do. and we, we love do. replanters. And, and I don't know if you're supposed to talk about numbers on podcasts. I'm not sure you are. I don't know. But you all download these things about, I don't know, eight, ten thousand 10,000 times a month uh, at this point. Something Which along those lines. Praise the Lord. And we, we want to see that increase, not because we don't get a dime for the yeah. downloads or anything like that. Can we? No. <laughs> we tried. Um, but we just, we just wanted to be out there. You know, we, we just want to be helpful. It's a way for us to be present in people's lives. And we, we normally put a little bit of thought into these that we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, although today, <laughs> we are literally – Today, we have no script. We're just going to go off the top of our head. Well, we had a plan. We, but we threw it out because it wasn't very good. And Alec, Alec, and Brooke, Alec yeah. stood up and said, hey, I got a great idea. In other words, Alec said, I don't like this one. Yeah. So. No, we're, this is the last one of the year. And so, Alec, we're just going to – literally, we are just – we're yeah. letting the Holy Spirit lead us That's today. Right. That's right. Right? And we are in the Spurgeon Library, by the way, yes. at Midwestern Baptist <laughs> Theological Seminary. So tell us what we're going to do today, Mark. Well, I think we just – go ahead. Can I, can I just say oh, something? Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. You are you the got, announcer. Well, no, just real quickly. <laughs> we just had a tour come through here a few moments ago yes. through the library. And, yes. of course, the podcast booth opens up to the library. Right. And it, we're in the Spurgeon Library, right. and all of the and it was young people. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming high school, like college, high school, or something yeah. like that. They're coming through, and they kept looking in here, and you could see them mouthing Spurgeon. Looking at me sitting here, <laughs> Spurgeon. <laughs> seeing Is that Spurgeon? There. Is that Spurgeon? <laughs> oh, so I know there's a bit of a resemblance. He was a he was a handsome dude, wasn't he? Gorgeous, well, fit. He could have. He could have been. A, he could have done Iron Man. <laughs> well, it was he, your he cigar, I think, that gave it away. <laughs> That's right. Know? All right. Let's let's talk about that because we said let's let's kind of encapsulate everything that we're doing, mm-hmm. with, that we're talking about, and that is just simply this statement: God is our only hope in revitalization. Amen. And so we we thought, what can we do? Uh, how can we? Make that yeah. so clear, and it's obviously going to be different for all of us. Uh, you know, things that we've drawn through the through the last several months, some eighty, some odd podcasts, and everything. So let's just kind of talk about that. The the, the what does that say? What does that mean? Yeah. How do you apply it? The first thing it means to me is I am not the hope in revitalization. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't have to carry this thing on my back. It's not about my personality, my winsomeness, yep. my creativity. It's not about anything about me. Now, God uses me, and I gotta, mm-hmm. I gotta be, I gotta be, completely open to Him and completely at His at His disposal. I, I've got to make my life available to Him. But it's not my strength that does it. That's right. It's not my church. It's His, mm. and it's His work. Yeah. At the end of the day, Pastor, uh, He will build His church. He'll do it through you. But it's not on your shoulders, mm-hmm. all right? Yeah. That's the first thing that comes to yeah. my mind. Here's something that comes to my mind is, is just identity. You know what? Your identity is you have been saved by the blood of Jesus. You are an adopted son of God or daughter of God, if you're listening to this. Your identity is not in how effective you are in church revitalization. And... Yes, God has called us to this work. Praise the Lord. It's a joyful work. It's a hard work. But at the end of the day, however your church is doing, ultimately, 
is is not what the Lord sees when he looks at you. When he looks at you, he sees a son or daughter that he deeply loves, who he's chosen before the foundations of the world, who's died for you. And so I say that because if you're discouraged and we all get discouraged, um, you can start putting far too much value in who you are as a revitalizer or replanter. And that can go one of two ways, usually with because of our hearts. We can either get prideful. Look what I'm doing. Look at the new life of this church, man. We've grown this thing from 30 to 100 people. And man, you want me to come speak and kind of become an expert? And pride creeps in really fast. Or you go the other way and say, man, I'm a loser. <laughs> I can't do this. I don't know. I mean, here these other guys doing it. Either way, the focus is wrong. The focus is on you. And what I just want to say is, man, the Lord loves you. Right. <laughs> he loves you. And your joy is to be found in who you are as a child of God. And I'm preaching this to you. I'm preaching it to me. You know what I mean? So your identity in Christ. So that's one thing when I think of God as our hope. He literally is our hope every day as his child. I think you can also have great hope in God's sovereignty. Mm-hmm. Nothing takes him by surprise. God knew COVID was coming. God knew you were going to go to this church. God knew how desperate this church was going to be. God knew that these some of these people in this church were going to be there who were going to give you issues and difficulties. God knows what's going to happen to you tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Nothing takes him by surprise. That's right. You can rest comfortably in God's sovereignty. It's the, it's the most comfortable place you can rest every day, every night. Relax in that, knowing that nothing takes him Amen. by surprise. He is fully in control fully in charge. Yep. He's working all things together for his glory and for your good. Yep. And even when it doesn't appear like it, you just think about Joseph in the prison yep. and God was working through all of that. He's working in your life. That's right. So we, we have confidence in God's sovereignty that even though we don't know what's happening in our church tomorrow, he does. Remember when Jesus shows up on the island of Patmos with John and John sees him and has this amazing picture of the resurrected Christ. One of the one of the ways John describes Jesus is eyes of flame, eyes of fire. Mm. What that means is he sees everything. Wow. Pastor, I want you to know there isn't anything in your church right now going on that Jesus doesn't know. He knows more about your church than you know about your church. Yeah, that's right. And as you're listening to this podcast, you're going through your mind thinking, man, nobody knows what I'm going through. They don't know the problem with that couple. They don't know the issue with that thing. They don't know how much money this has cost. I've got so many problems in this church. Listen, Jesus sees every one of them. He knows every problem you have. He knows problems you don't know about, and he knows the problems you're going to have tomorrow. He has eyes of fire. Mm. He sees it all. I find great comfort in that. Amen. I think one of the things that strikes me about this statement, God is our only hope in revitalization, is is the word hope. Mm-hmm. You know, I love that word because I mean, when you for, it's as a biblical word, both in the New Testament and Old Old Testament, it means the same thing. It means practically, it means confident anticipation. Mm. And so, I, I this says that God is our confident anticipation yeah. in revitalization. The fact of the matter is, God didn't call you there to fail. Right. Mm. He called you there mm. for him to succeed. Mm. You're just you're you're just his tool. Right. And God is always at work where the need is. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole principle of of my God shall supply all your, all your need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. God moves where the need is. So, mm-hmm. if you want to know what God's up to in your community, look at the need. You want to know what God's up to in your church? Look at the need. You know want want to know what God's up to in your life? Look at your need. That's where God's at work. So we can have confident that we're in a difficult situation that God is up to that's something. Right, that's, that's right. That's right. That's exactly right. So what was the first thing you said? you remember? Um, boy, I just— We should have written these I know, down. I know somebody, <laughs> somebody call in and tell us. Are you writing these down, Kyle? Well, identity. Does, so does this, your identity this is, is going to be This is going to be a book someday. Your identity is so, in Christ. number one. No, yep, that's right. Because you cannot do a podcast— we cannot do a podcast without a list, right? That's right. We love Tom lists. Rainer taught me that. That's right. <laughs> Tom Rainer gave me five reasons you have to have podcasts with lists. Are you ready? That's a show so, to come. That's a show to come. Yeah, so, n- number one, Christ will build his church. Yeah. Number two, it doesn't rely on you. It relies on, on him. Number three, hope. Hope. We have confident we have anticipation. Confident hope. All right. Absolutely. Okay. That's perfect. Okay. I've got another one. Go I've ahead. Got another one. Okay. Another one is this. Um, succinctly, I guess I would put it this way. Um, the Lord's grace is sufficient for you in the midst of the mistakes you're going to make Yep. as a revitalizer. Yeah. So, you know what? We Oftentimes, we can feel like absolute failures. Man, I bombed that sermon. 
I tried to lead that change, and honestly, I read all the books beforehand, and I still led it poorly. And I hurt people, or I, I, I lashed out at this person. I shouldn't have done that. And I think a lot of pastors live with this constant sense of failure and guilt. And so when I think of God as our only hope and revitalization, this is where you have to be gospel-centered in the best sense, which I mean, look— the, the grace of Jesus is sufficient for you in all the ways that you are going to make mistakes in, as a pastor and revitalization. And the best thing you can do is be quick to name that reality. Repentance is, is a pathway to life and joy. <laughs> That's why repentance shouldn't just be something we do once in a while. Repentance is the life of the Christian. And I think it's the life of the pastor. And so for me, I would just say to encourage you, because of what Christ has done, he's paid it all. And because of who you are in him, man, his grace is sufficient when you wake up and you feel like, man, I am a failure in this. <laughs> and I have, uh, boy, I've done things I shouldn't have done. I'm conversations shouldn't have. Listen, the blood of Jesus covers you. You are forgiven. I think at first, you know, again, first uh, John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So for, for those of you who are in the pit this morning or the time when you are in the pit, remember the, the sufficiency of the grace of God for you in the midst of your brokenness, your weakness, and the, uh, the, the mistakes that you're going to make and that I'm going to make in church revitalization. Great. One of my favorite books is a book that I wrote. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it deals with the issue of success. And the, the principle of success is we think of success as an end result. Mm. You know, like this church, when is it revitalized? Mm -hmm. You know, in other words, when am I successful? Yeah. Right. You know, when yeah, is it yeah, revitalized? Yeah. But the fact of the matter is success really for the Christian, the success is the next step. Mm. So what is your next step? It's mm -hmm. not the end result. Mm. God knows what the end result mm -hmm. is. Yeah. What you need to focus on is your next step. So God is your hope and revitalization because he gives you your next step. Wow, yeah, right. that's really good. That's God good. is your hope and revitalization because only eternity will reveal the results of your labor. Mm, wow. uh, not that your, your hope is not in the results next week or next month. It's mm -hmm. in the fact that in eternity, mm -hmm. his word never goes out and comes back void. Yep. So you can have hope in knowing that the work you're doing now, even though it shows no physical results, perhaps, no numerical yep. growth or anything yep, like yep, that, yep, yep, yep. if you're obedient and you're really following him, eternity will reveal the results Amen. of your work on his behalf that he has done, only heaven's going to show that. And you're going to mm. look back and go, I would have no idea at that time that that was going to be so impactful to the kingdom yep. and to Christ and to his, his work. And so you can have hope in knowing that none of your work is wasted, That's right. Pastor. That's right. None of the problems you have, none of the struggles you have, none of the, the, the sermons you preach, none of the Bible studies you lead, none of the funerals you preach. Yep. Sometimes you feel like you're just treading water, you're on a treadmill, you're not making any progress. But his word never goes out and comes back void. And we can have hope in knowing one day yeah. we will see how all of this worked That's together. right. That's right. Okay, I got another one. Yep. Let's just keep rolling, man. Right. This is this is fun. Okay, so we talked about um, the last one I was talking about is how the, the grace of the gospel is sufficient for us in our weakness and our sin. Here's the other thing. Now, we have hope because his strength is perfect when our strength is gone. Mm -hmm. When we feel weak— when we feel, do I have the strength? Can I go into that meeting? <laughs> the answer is no. You the don't answer have is the you strength. don't. <laughs> yeah. But His strength is perfect yeah. when our strength in God. What a what a Savior, man! What a the kindness of the Lord that we not only can we not do this on our own, but when we acknowledge we don't have the strength, His strength is perfect in that time of need. And I'm telling you, there's there's guys listen to this right now who feel like they got no strength in them. And I want to tell you, man, the Lord is enough. He is more than enough to give you the strength that you need to continue to persevere um, and to even find joy in the midst of it. You can do this because you're you're in Christ. He does it. He can do it through you. And he will. And he will do it through you. Because so he, he said, I will build my church. Amen. He will. That's right. Here's another reason you can have hope. You ready? The church that you're pastoring now is not the church that's going to be there for all eternity. Mm -hmm. One day, mm -hmm. one day when Jesus returns, uh, this imperfect church mm -hmm. that you are called to pastor with these, just like you're an imperfect pastor and you got imperfect people and you battle with sin, you struggle with all kinds of things and always problems, always disagreements, always struggles, always all that stuff. One day 
when he returns, uh, what God will present to his son is a perfected bride. Wow. So all these people you pass it to every Sunday morning that can just drive you nuts, and the way you drive them nuts with your inconsistency as a minister, as a pastor, one day— this corruptible put incorruption, mm. this mortal put immortality. One day we're going to be with him. One day we're going to Amen. be uh, like him. And and every saint you preach to one mm-hmm. day is going to be a perfected saint. Wow. Mm. And that day is not today, yeah. but it's coming. You yep. can't stop it. So on Sunday That's morning, right. and when you get frustrated with these people and they get frustrated with you, just know, you know what? One day we're not going to be in this sinful mm. state. We're not mm-hmm. going to be in this broken state. One day he's going to finish this work in us. Right now it hasn't happened. We, we work hard, we seek edification, we do those things, but one day. Wow. One day. Yeah. So sometimes you just live for that day. Mm-hmm. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen? All right. One of the things that you know about revitalization is this. God is our only hope in revitalization, and you need to just cling to this. He is as much at work in your people as he is in your yeah, life. That's yeah, that's true. That's so good. Yeah. Yep. Can I say one other thing? Yep. He's at work in your, your if you're married and have kids, in them as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so in the midst of the challenges that come with this, you have hope that, you know what, God loves your wife and your kids more than you do. (laughs) And he's at work. He's using all the challenges in church revitalization to sanctify them and to grow them as well. And so that should give us great hope, I think, as, as dads and husbands and pastors. And we have hope, as Richard and Henry Blackaby reminds us, that God is at work all around us. Yeah. And so even when you don't see him at work, yep. he's still at work. Amen. He's been at work in the foundation of the world. He's continuing at work. And by the way, when you don't know what to do, ask him. Because mm. Jesus even said, I don't do what I say to do. I do what the Father shows me to do. And and he will show you what to do mm. if you will follow him and ask him. But believe me, every apartment complex in your community, every farm in your community, every school in your community, God is at work yeah. in those places. Yep. You are Sometimes you feel so alone, mm. like nothing's going on. No one's responding. I'm out here all alone. The Holy Spirit's all around you. That's right. God is working in every home, every heart, every business, every place. You are not alone. He is working there all around Amen. you. Amen. You know, Lou Miller, um, probably the greatest Bible teacher that I've ever known in my life, um, Lou Miller used to say, you know, God loves you so much, he has your picture on the refrigerator. <laughs> and uh, and I, I, used to, I love that, that, that idea that God loves us so much. But I always think about this often that God is going like, "Hey Gabriel, watch this," you know. <laughs> and uh, you yeah. know, in our ministry, I think that's true that yeah. we need we need to be sensitive mm. to the fact that God is so cognizant of what we're going through. Yeah, you know that He's He's like, "Hey, you got to watch this. Watch what's about to happen. It could be good. It could be bad. But it's still in control." You know what? And here's the thing: the heart of that that I love that about the picture. We, sh- we cannot be quick to forget that he is for us and not against us yeah. through Christ. Yeah. I think and s- our church. And our churches. That's exactly right. You know what? Ministers. We're going to wrap up this year of 2023 with this episode. And, man, go back and listen to it if it's been helpful to you and share it with some other people. And we're just glad that you're part of our family uh, here at Revitalize and Replant. And we hope these podcasts are uh, they're a blessing. They edify you and they strengthen you in the work because the work is hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard and it's challenging and at times it's very discouraging but there is hope in the gospel there is hope in christ mm. one day every one of these churches is going to be perfected one day mm. there'd be no more dying churches yeah. all right Amen. so let's let's end with this second corinthians the apostle paul this is a word to all pastors replanters revitalizers do not lose heart though our outer self is wasting away our inner self is being renewed day by day For this light, momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient. Your church right now that's full of trouble, it's transient. But the things that are unseen, your perfected church, that is for all eternity. Amen. Amen and amen. Thanks for joining us today on Revitalize and Replant. This podcast is brought to you by the North American Mission Board, where we help dying or struggling churches regain health for the glory of God and the good of their communities. If you found this conversation helpful, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. To learn more about becoming a replanting pastor or to explore resources about revitalization for your own church, 
visit churchreplanters.com.